Daytona Beach, world famous. Of course, for the beach that you can drive on, it's great waves, it's surfing. Of course, the Daytona International Speedway, but also for golf. That's right. Great golf, a lot of golf courses within a very short drive of this famous Daytona Beach. We're going to bring some of the best to you on this latest episode of The Traveling Golfer. One moment changes everything. Distance, precision, decided in a microsecond. So reduce your ball spin and get the most performance at impact with four yards more. A next-gen golf tee proven by pros and players like you. The unique durable design flexes at contact, reducing ball spin, giving you tighter control and more distance. So change your game and get four yards more. Brought to you by Greenkeepers. Golf smart. You don't have to go away to get away. Go and explore. Find the small businesses that make where you live a community. When you dine, choose homemade. On a free weekend, discover the great outdoors. And if it's brewed here, enjoy it with friends. Support small for an experience you won't find anywhere else. Make it local, make it Main Street, make it Motco. At Yingling, we've been brewing great beer that brings people together for nearly two centuries. Wherever good times happen, Yingling Traditional Lager has been there and will be for the next round. Yingling, to good times ahead. Golfers, we're different. We aren't afraid to go for it. We're dedicated. And we never stop. Not every place gets us, but one does. Myrtle Beach, 78 courses, 60 miles of beach. You could say we were made for each other. The beach gets golfers. Golfers get the beach. Book your Myrtle Beach golf getaway today. We're with Brian Jaquay, director of golf here at Daytona Beach Golf Club. 36 holes and Brian a busy place two golf courses the famous south course Donald Ross correct yep built in, he came down here in 1921 on these railroad tracks right over here um, stopped and said let's build a golf course and this is where it is and it's been that way but the south course has been here since 1921 and the north course has been here since 1968 so tell us a little bit about the south course. We're standing on the 18th green, beautiful lake behind. Mm -hmm. uh, typical Donald Ross? Um, yeah, it's a very small green, target, uh, target golf for sure. Uh, meandering back and forth, you go pretty much play each, each hole, you see pretty much the entire golf course while you're playing, playing the hole. So very, very straightforward, just like most Donald Ross courses were. So that means that you've done a good job of tree maintenance here if you can see all the golf course and yeah. that is a huge factor yeah we had a uh, had a couple hurricanes come through here we lost about 150 trees thank you for those hurricanes you <laughs> <laughs> who yeah. knows that there'd be a good uh, aspect to that but it's true yep yep usually on the golf course all you hear is the chirping of the birds maybe a few choice words here and there at daytona beach golf club also can hear the roar of the engines from the nearby speedway. It's a unique place to be right in the center of Daytona Beach, um, pretty much right on the railroad tracks. It's one of the only golf courses that actually has railroad tracks that goes through it. So you have to wait if you're on one portion of the course for the trains to go through and come back across. So. <laughs> How about that? Mm -hmm. That's really something. Of course, in the 20s, that's the uh, only way people were getting to Florida. In addition to the small greens, uh, Ross was always known for turtleback greens, runoff areas. I'm gonna imagine that's softened a little bit here for 
Deli Feet play. Yeah, and they're original, uh, original style Bermuda greens, so we really can't convert them to the new greens of these days where you get that very small bladed because it'd be a lot faster, which we would lose pin positions on. Right. So those greens, either we got to do a major modification or we pretty much stick with what we got on the Donald Ross. Yeah. But it's a lot of people think it's easy because it's short, but they, you, it's target golf. You got to you got to know right where to put the ball. And how about a favorite hole? Do you have one in particular here on the uh, south course? I I like probably 15, which is a par three, which is over on the northeast corner of the, of the golf course. Little par three over the lake, big uh, wide bunker in the front. Uh, actually, one of the larger greens on the golf course as well. Yeah, there you go. Nothing like making a birdie on the signature hole. How about the north course? 1968, obviously built. 47 years after the first golf course here. Mm -hmm. The north course is more of a Lynx style, um, more through the neighborhood, more through the, the meandering through the trees, and a little bit more water, a little bit larger greens. Um, like I said, a little bit longer par fours. Um, par threes can be challenging, a little bit more length than the, than the Donald Ross ones. So on the north course, do you have a favorite hole on that one? Probably number five is our signature hole. It's a par four that goes over water nice fountain but it is drivable uh, as long as you don't have the wind in your face you could drive it over the corner um, so you can be make looking at eagle or you could lay up and hopefully you don't go in the water laying up so it's eh, it's still probably the probably the best hole all right so you're obviously trying to goad me into trying to go for it on that <laughs> hole there Just don't hit anybody on number six please <laughs> okay <laughs> 290 yards drivable only if you take the shortcut over the trees, over the water, got to get it up fast. Ready? In my dreams. Now we know that in Florida, in season, the cost to play golf can get up there pretty high mm -hmm. not the case here not really no in the summertime afternoon you're probably playing, you're roughly around 28 to 22 dollars to play out here which most putt putts nowadays are more expensive than that <laughs> <laughs> and how about in the high season high season uh, it's about 48 dollars at the peak so wow. still still very manageable it's not that expensive that is that is a very affordable price for golf and especially on courses that are kept in good condition for the everyday golfer. Yep. Uh, and I'm sure that's part of the mantra here. Oh yeah. And adding to the affordability, we allow golfers to walk, which not many courses do anymore. So we do get a lot of people that want to get the real exercise and the way golf is supposed to be played. Boy, that's absolutely great. And that knocks the price down even more. Under $30, you can come out here and walk in the prime time season. That is amazing, folks. Take advantage of it. Brian Jaquay, Director of Golf and the Head of Hospitality here at Daytona Beach Golf Club. Goes all the way back to 1921 and getting better as the time goes on. V Vibracore? Vibracore. Vibracore. That's pretty cool. It's injected? It's injected. Vibracore. I feel the vibe. I'm feeling it. So what is it? The best feeling and longest times you'll ever hit. Is that Bernhard? Oh, great. Langer. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I play Tour Edge? Because I win with it. Pound for pound, nothing comes close. It screams. It tracks. It's soft. It reacts. It is the Bridgestone Tour B with a game-changing reactive cover designed to spring faster off your driver and stick longer to your wedges. Try Bridgestone's Tour Bs. The Tour Ball reinvented. We're at Halifax Plantation, a wonderful community 
and semi-private golf course with Joe Zaleski. He is general manager, PGA member, and the one who can tell us the history of this course that came on the scene in 1993. That's correct. And it started out as um, the centerpiece of a large development back in 1993. The clubhouse came on about two years later and it's been run as a semi-private course. Uh, nice property, it's a very popular golf course. It's um, well liked because it's got a really good layout. Bill Hammock Design, he's known, known for designing courses that are very playable. And he did a number of courses in this area. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right yes. around here, Bill Hammock, you know, maybe not the rest of the country, but this area, he did a number of courses and, and pretty good ones. Here, there are so many trees here. This, unlike some of the other courses in the area where there's a lot of water, Halifax's tree-lined fairways everywhere, mostly live oaks all over the place, and they're beautiful yeah. trees, you know, that you're not overrun with pine trees and things that are a, uh, uh, more of a problem on a golf course. Uh, the live oaks are beautiful, and of course, the entire drive coming into Halifax Plantation is through a canopy of live oaks right along the intercoastal. It's really an impressive drive coming into the place. Tell me a little bit about the strategy of the golf course, Joe. Playing a tree-lined course like this sometimes takes some strategy, not just hitting the fairway, but hitting the right side of the fairway? Correct, and uh, there's pretty generous quarters on the golf course, so it's not like um, it's tight driving. You can find the fairway pretty easily. You don't need to cut the corners. It's not, um, so we have five sets of tees, so you can play whatever length is comfortable. There's no reason to take shortcuts through the trees and things like that. Yeah, for the uh, muscle guys, they can go way back. You go pretty far. Yeah, we can play 7,000 yards. And we've got a somewhat sandy soil, so there's not a lot of roll. It's a true yardage here. Five sets of tees, that is important. Let yes. people play from where they want to play. Yeah, you can play inside of 5,000 yards for the someone who wants a little bit shorter golf course. And uh, we have nice increments up to the 7,000 yards. So that anybody can find a course that they want to play here. It's very, very comfortable. The greens at Halifax have a lot of movement to them at a whole location with a sharp runoff after it and a double break and well putting is going to be an adventure we'll see. Oh brother. So going around the course there is going to be um, that theme of tree-lined fairways all the way around, but there are, are a number of holes that sort of stand out. Do you have some favorites? Number nine comes to play where you've got a series of three bunkers right in a row that you have to carry with wet shots of the green. That always gives people a fit to carry two of them, don't get the third one. Or they get psyched out with the first one and put it in the first one and not carry, this, carry it at all. Um, so that's, that's a nice area. Welcome to Halifax Plantation's version of the church pews. Those famous bunkers at Oakmont in Pennsylvania. Not quite the same, but still. Three bunkers, a daunting task trying to get to this pin on number nine. All right, we cleared all three of them. That is a bit of success in itself. This is going to be a tough lie. I'm with Chris Keeler, dining room manager friendliest 19th hole you'll ever find right here at Halifax Plantation. Chris, this is a not only a 19th hole for the golfers, but a very popular place for the people in the neighborhood too. Absolutely, absolutely. We have a lot of regular faces that we see on a regular basis, <laughs> whether they're golfers or not. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the clubhouse here. It's a large clubhouse with outdoor dining, course the pub but then also plenty going on the rest of the building. That's right we have a dining room um, we serve lunch seven days a week and dinner five nights a week we also have a large ballroom where we have weddings birthday parties 
any, any kind of celebration, even some meetings, golf tournaments. We stay pretty busy. Well, we know all about the lunch. Our food's great here, and uh, it's a, a large menu for lunch, too. So I, I'm guessing that speaks to the fact that it's not just golfers coming in. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. All right, folks, don't miss that. Come in and see Chris at the pub, my favorite 19th hole in the area, right here at Halifax Plantation. Wyckoff, General Manager, PGA Professional at Victoria Hills Golf Club in beautiful DeLand, Florida. A little spot outside of Daytona Beach. And Scott, mm -hmm. this place has had an amazing development over the years since it first opened in 2001. Right. Not just the golf course, but actually the town of Deland, it's really pretty nice to see. Oh, it's a beautiful town. The golf course itself, as you were saying, Ron Garl designed, uh, unbelievable golf course with a lot of character to it. All the golf holes, has they have so much rolling terrain out here, so much movement in the greens, uh, fabulous place to play. I know Ron builds 18 good holes, and he'd sure tell does. you that if you asked him. Absolutely. But I'm gonna ask you about some of your favorite holes out here. Um, there's a lot of risk reward holes. You really have to drive it well on this golf course, uh, but there's a few holes that uh, are particularly uh, interesting to me, especially the 10th hole, which is a very demanding par four. Um, you have to actually favor the left side off your tee shot, but then you have a, a longer shot into the green. Well bunkered, um, great, very demanding golf hole. As if number 10, at 440 yards from the back tee isn't enough of a challenge the second shot is all uphill so the general characteristic of the golf course mm -hmm. is this a super challenging course or maybe one that's a little more player friendly. How would you characterize it? Well, there's five different tees on the golf course, so it's very user friendly depending on where you tee off, but it is a championship golf course. It's over 7,100 yards, par 72, um, and it'll challenge every golfer, every facet of your game and every, uh, every player, whether they're novice or professional. A lot of times pros and architects are reluctant to pick out their favorite hole on a golf course, they don't want to slight one of their other children, but I had no problem. Number 12 at Victoria Hills is absolutely my favorite. About a 350 yard par four, just sweeps up into the sky. This unbelievable elevation change that you have here on the course. It inspires you to hit a tee ball. There's some, some uh, stout golf holes out here, um, depending on, again, where you play the tees from. But uh, he does, Ron Garrow does a great job in bunkering uh, the, the greens. Um, and he just, he, he makes you use every golf club in your bag. Speaking of bunkering, I hear that there's a pretty good number of bunkers out here. I have not counted them, but well over 100 bunkers out here. So wow. you really need to bring some copper tone if you, if you do not hit the ball where you're looking. <laughs> so. Spending a little time on the beach, I hear you. The fairway bunkers at Victoria Hills can be quite challenging. A lot of them have high faces, but what architect Ron Garl did was he pointed the faces away from the target area, giving you a little bit of a bailout. Hopefully you can get out of them. We have a great staff here that's very welcoming and when you step on the property you'll, uh, you'll be treated by the service that we provide to you from top to bottom. All right, Victoria Hills, the land of Florida on the way in or the way out of
Daytona Beach. Daytona Beach Oceanfront Resort. Waterfalls in front, the ocean, and the famous clock tower behind us. And we've got Adam Shemus, hotel manager, with us. What a beautiful property. Thank you. A lot of people don't think of the enormous resorts when you think of Daytona Beach, but this one is really all encompassing. Actually, we have a beautiful facility here, 744 rooms, oceanfront here with the famous Daytona Beach. Uh, lots of lots of fun activities nearby downtown here across the street from the Ocean Center. Lots of dining. We have uh, outdoor pool bars, indoor restaurants, about five outlets overall here on the facility. There's probably 20 golf courses that probably I can get to in less than 30 minutes. So being a kid from up north is, uh, and a golf nut, very excited to be down here and having all this at my, uh, at my fingertips. Yeah. Obviously, Daytona Beach is known for a lot of things. One of the things is nightlife, and you have an active nightlife here your own nightclub. Absolutely. Fridays and Saturday nights and Don Rico's here inside the uh, Hilton Daytona Beach over the front. Uh, great restaurant. We've got a little DJ action on Friday and Saturday nights. Lots of entertainment. Uh, McCoy's Rum Room as well. So we have some great outlets here for people to enjoy. And the rooms, you say 744 rooms, they go from standard rooms all the way up to all the way up to suites. All the way to beautiful suites, absolutely. We have some great rooms here, some great views. Terrace suites as well. Uh, we have the Clock Tower suites, which overlook the Clock Tower here as well. What a place. The headquarter for our trip to Daytona Beach, Traveling Valley. Brandon Little, Sports Sales Manager for the Daytona Beach Convention and Visitors Bureau. Everybody knows about the racetrack, Everybody knows about the world's most famous beach. They don't know all of the other things that you can do in the Daytona Beach area, and that's just your job. Tell me all about go. it. And we are in one of them right now here at Beulah Creek Park, up here in Ormond Beach in the historic Loop area. Great scenic views behind us, great golf around us as well. Halifax Plantation being one of the courses just across the street from where we're standing now. Yeah, this 400-year-old oak is the big granddaddy of all the oaks in this area. There are so many live oaks and the Spanish moss and it's really very, very picturesque. People don't think of that in Daytona Beach. No, you don't see it a lot. Uh, definitely a diverse area though. As you know, we do have our wonderful 23 miles of beach which lead up into this area. But lots of things to see and do in between, whether you're out doing something on the water, fishing, boating, having fun out at the beach, or you're coming up this way for a little bit more relaxed kind of field, getting more in nature, as we do have numerous bikes and trails throughout the entire area. There is a lot to do in the entire expanded Daytona Beach area. The Convention and Visitors Bureau is your conduit to all of those things their publications their website they have everything you need speaking of the website it is www.daytonabeach.com nice and easy all right brandon thank you for the quick tour of everything to do i think i'm headed to the racetrack roar of the engines well right now it's just the roar of the engines from traffic going outside the Daytona International Speedway. But just standing outside, you can feel the excitement. And that's part of the excitement of a golf trip to Daytona Beach. We hope you enjoyed this latest episode of The Traveling Golfer. We want to thank everyone from the Daytona Beach Convention and Visitors Bureau for making it possible. And we invite all of you to meet me somewhere else down the golf road even if it's that road going around the racetrack here in daytona <laughs>